Hello, and thank you for joining Luminati's webinar on crawler automation. My name is Rachel, and I'm here with our Director of Support, Saria, and Product Manager, Rai. During our webinar, please ask questions in the small chat box at the bottom of the page, and they will be addressed towards the end. To begin, how do sites know when you're using a bot or a crawler? Well, mostly it is due to cookies, the browser user agent, and your IP. When getting or posting information on a website, the visited website saves cookies on your browser. The website recognizes a real browser by checking the IP address and reading the request headers, which include information about the user agent. A lack of cookies or the correct user agent may trigger the website to block you from retrieving information. Both can be programmed to ensure this does not happen. Your IP, however, is the single thing that cannot be coded since it is part of the network infrastructure. So I'm gonna start by going to whoer.net and checking what information my computer is sending over the web. So as you can see, currently I am browsing from our Luminati headquarters in Netanya, Israel, over 013 ISP. My browser supports JavaScript, and from this, the target website is able to collect the browser operating system, screen colors, screen resolution, flash version, and Java support. Uh, WebRTC is used for real-time communication from browser to browser and retrieves my IP, port, and protocol to compare with the network data. Also, your computer time can be collected and compared to the IP time zone. Here I can also find uh, the request header sent to the target website in the browser console by selecting F12 and going to network tab in Chrome or selecting control plus R. Clicking on the document, I'll find the header information and the request I sent to Hoor. The request header contains the cookies and user agent, which is the browser type and version. Here, my user agent values, and as you can see, the cookie of Hoor is also here. Now, target websites that compare my PC information and check sessions with cookies require that when I send requests over an API, that I provide a new cookie every few requests. This, as well as the exact same user agent, and sometimes even the accept language. This is because a broken user agent or a lack of user agent may in itself trigger an error response by the target website. Now, I can manage complex scraping operations by using automation tools such as Selenium or Puppeteer that actually open a real browser or even use an open source headless browser like Chromium. Browsers are a tool I can use if I need to run JS or I don't want to write a complex request chain myself. The downside is that running a browser is slower and takes more RAM than using a custom script. Automation on top of a real browser will make scraping more simple as this means I don't need to bother collecting a database of cookies to rotate or correct user agents. This will increase my success rate with target websites that are checking for these. Now, you may be thinking, why a headless browser? Well, mainly for running the scraping automatically. A headless browser lacks Flash Player and digital rights management that can send more information about my PC, and I can easily increase my success rate by not having them all together. Now, if you're trying to decide which automation tool I should work with, this really depends on your technical skills and the website you are targeting. For this example, I'm going to compare Puppeteer, an easy to use automation tool, to Selenium, which requires more technical expertise. Puppeteer, developed by Google, is easy to install with one command line. NPM, install Puppeteer. It only supports Chromium Headless Browser and it is based on Node. 
Very quickly, I'm able to start working Puppeteer and test a quick demo. I would like to mention, however, that Puppeteer does not support cross-border automation. Now, Selenium is the most flexible tool in terms of automation and functionality out there. Selenium supports many browsers, operating systems, and programming languages, such as Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, and JavaScript. Selenium will work on most target websites and can be automated for any reasonable scenario. On the other hand, installing and using Selenium requires some technical skills in terms of understanding web technologies and APIs. With Selenium WebDriver, you can upload or download files, work with pop-ups, and overcome dialog barriers. To summarize, both Puppeteer and Selenium support desktop web apps, responsive pages, and JavaScript. Uh, Puppeteer works only with Chrome and Chromium, whereas Selenium supports all common browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, and other headless browsers. I would like to mention that Puppeteer and Selenium do not support native mobile applications out of the box. However, Appium, developed by JS Foundation or Selendroid, developed by eBay Software Foundation, will allow you to automate native mobile applications. Both Selendroid and Appium require Selenium and the knowledge of how to work with Selenium API and WebDriver. Now I'll move on to how to connect Puppeteer with Proxy. So Puppeteer is node-based and supported in JavaScript. There are two steps to follow to route your traffic through the proxy IPs. First, route through the proxy server and port. Second, we need to authenticate the browser page with the proxy zone, username, and password. In this example, I will connect our Luminati Super Proxy when launching Puppeteer by defining the proxy server as zproxy.lam-superproxy.io and port 22225. Now for a new page, I'm adding page authentication credentials of the proxy zone, and this consists of the zone's full username and password. Um, removing authent authentication credentials and running my Puppeteer example will open the browser. Now, I paste my username here. and password below. And this is going to open a browser of Luminati's homepage and take a screenshot. I'll bring back my credentials and run my example again. And I'm going to get the page screenshot without asking for credentials. Now, where can I find my zone username and password? So I'm going to open up my Luminati dashboard and go to API and examples on the left hand side. Here I can select the zone and it will show me the relevant username and password. So our usernames consist of three parts, uh, LUM customer and dash my Luminati account ID, and then zone and the name of my zone. Therefore, LUM customer is my Luminati account ID and it will always stay the same. So your zone name, now that can change when you need it to. And I'd like to remind you that the password is unique for each zone 
and this should be copied into your code as well. The password can also be found on and updated in the settings of each zone. And you'll find it here and see that all of them have different passwords. So now I'm gonna look at a new example of Selenium in JavaScript. In Selenium, I'm going to start by setting the proxy and authentication credentials in the web driver function. Here, I'm going to add my proxy. So that's zproxy.lum slash superproxy.io and my port 22225. And now the username and password that we found before. I'm going to run this example. And as you see, it's gonna take a screenshot like before of Lunati's homepage and you're ready to go. Now the most essential tool for proxy manipulation is the proxy manager that is installed locally on your machine or virtual machine. Now why do I need the proxy manager? First, it's gonna retry my requests in case of failures or if I get an error code. It allows me to automatically blacklist IPs I can route my requests to, through residential data center and mobile IP networks. I can create rules for rotating and refreshing IPs. It allows for geo and ISP targeting. It can reduce your response bandwidth. Uh, we uh, allow you to save a pool of the fastest IPs and provide a complete request history with debug information for troubleshooting. Now, you can download the Luminati Proxy Manager from Luminati's dashboard by going to the Proxy Manager tab down on the left. So now we're gonna start the Proxy Manager. And it's gonna open, uh, it will start by opening a command, black window, or terminal, which consists of debugging information. Now I wanna clarify, you must keep this window open at all times, since closing it will stop the Proxy Manager and terminate all communication to the super proxy. In the browser, I'm going to type in http dot dot slash slash 127.0.0.1 semicolon 22999. And this is the address of the proxy manager, and it's going to take you to the proxy manager dashboard. When sending requests, the proxy manager is the middleman between my automated browser, which in these examples will be Selenium or Puppeteer, and the super proxy itself. Before starting, I'm gonna download the proxy manager SSL certificate and install it. And this will allow me to view HTTPS requests, debugging information, and apply rules on HTTPS traffic. So I've done this already. And now I'm going to start with creating a new proxy port. I'm going to select my zone, and that could be data center, residential, mobile, and a preset configuration. Now, as you can see, we've created a couple different options for you based on your needs. And when you're done, just click Save. So once I've created my port, I can click on the targeting tab. And this allows me to select the country and city I want my IP to come from. This can even be a specific ISP or mobile carrier. Now that I have chosen the correct target that I need, I'm going to move on to the request speed tab. And this is where I can select to remotely resolve by the peer. This means the translation of the URL to an IP address will be made on the peer side, or in other words, our real user in the location of interest. Here I can also set a number of parallel requests when a specific load and time is needed. Now I'll go to the rules tab. Here I can choose a rule type and how I want it to be handled. For this example, 
I'm going to choose um, a rule type and I'll focus on status code. So with status code, I can actually choose a specific error code, maybe one that I get often. And if I get this error code, I want the Luminati Proxy Manager to automatically refresh the IP. Once I've set my first rule, I can even add a second rule. And in this one, I want to choose the rule type status code again. And I want it to say, okay, every time I hit a 403 error code, I want to automatically retry with a brand new IP. Um, if you are working with HTTPS, I want you to keep in mind that you do need to go to the general tab and enable SSL logs. So enable SSL, make sure it's on yes. And this allows you to track your success rate, view debugging details, and will provide error information for troubleshooting purposes. So now I want to connect my proxy manager to Selenium and Puppeteer. And this is done by updating the proxy server URL to your local machine. I'm going to go to my Puppeteer example and change the server from the Luminati Super Proxy to the proxy manager on my local machine using 127.0.0.1. And now the port I created earlier in the proxy manager dashboard, which was port 24,000. Now, when working with Luminati's proxy manager, there is no need for authentication credentials in my code since the proxy manager is already authenticated with Luminati Super Proxy. Therefore, I can just remove my credentials. Now I'm going to the Selenium example, and I'll do the same thing for connecting Selenium to the proxy manager. So again, now I'm going to connect through to our IP 127.0.0.1 and port 24,000. And again, I do not need the username and password because the credentials aren't needed with the proxy manager. Please don't forget to press save. As we get to the end of our webinar, as we get to the end of our webinar, web automation can be achieved with simple or more advanced tools, depending on what you need. I want to mention that Luminati's technical support team is available to assist in all your web crawling needs. And please feel free to reach out to support at Luminati.io. I hope this webinar was fruitful for you. You are welcome to visit our frequently asked questions at Luminati.io slash FAQ or watch our past webinars, which can be found at luminati.io slash webinar. Again, my name is Rachel, and thank you for attending. Have a great day.